I'm really happy to be here. It was so much stress trying to get here, to be honest, between all the planning and like shipping my bike out to Iceland. But now that I'm on the road and I'm camping and I'm doing what I came here to do, I feel really, really good. I have done about 75 kilometers so far and I'm at a beautiful campsite with this beautiful view. It's like a little hiking trail, I guess, or like shore um, behind the campsite. And this place is gorgeous. The grass over here looks like a Dr. Seuss book. The rocks are very pretty. I got my Crocs on the rocks. I think this is coming in from the ocean, but it looks kind of half dried up. I don't really know what this is, but it's beautiful. Tomorrow I'm trying to go for a longer day to try to kind of get ahead, but it's not too windy and difficult. Um, I want to aim for like maybe 100k. The only thing is 100k kind of leaves me in the middle of nowhere. Like there's no city at the end of 100k. But wild camping is legal in Iceland if you're backpacking or biking. So I might aim for around 100k, see where that leaves me. If it's campable, I'll stay there. If not, we'll find somewhere else to be. I don't know where I am, but it sure is beautiful. And look at this view. I did not sleep much, but I'm feeling so happy. there all day but they really picked up after I ate lunch. They're like maybe 35 40 kilometers an hour headwinds and they've been going for hours like they're like pushing me off my bike almost. So this morning I woke up at 4.30 and I barely slept, but I was okay because I was so excited. I had so much energy and vigor to start my day that I was fine with it. And I packed up my tent and I got myself ready to go. And I think I started biking by like 6.30 today. And this morning was honestly really chill. It was The weather was decent. It wasn't perfect, but it was just like a little sunny, a little rainy, a little windy. And I was dilly-dallying. You saw me. I, w I went to a volcano. I went to a waterfall. I stopped at a restaurant and got a burger with brie on it. It was so good, by the way. And then when I left that restaurant, the headwinds were going crazy. 
and they clearly still are. I was biking in these strong headwinds for hours, literally hours. And there was a lot of uphill, mind you. And there was even points where I was going downhill, pedaling at my full capacity and still barely moving because the wind was pushing me back. It's insane out here. And I mentally prepared myself for this before I left for this trip because I knew that this was part of it. I knew it would happen. I just didn't think it would be the second day. <laughs> and so I was biking for hours in that condition and I meant to do 30 more kilometers than I did. Let me put this into perspective. I did 65 kilometers today and it took me about 14 hours. And I wanted to do 100, but the fog on the highway got so bad that it just wasn't safe for me to ride anymore. So I had to call it a night and just set up my tent on the side of the highway and there's no shelter, there's no trees, there's no rocks. I'm in the windiest place you could freaking imagine. And I'm here in my flimsy little shelter and I'm about to eat some pasta. So I don't know. I'm just happy to be in my sleeping bag. I'm cold. I'm tired. This is the reality. This is the reality of biking Iceland. I'm having a great time, but it was a little bit stressful. Good morning, beautiful world. I'm in such a chipper mood today. People are singing. I'm in high spirits today because I feel like a human being again. Last night I took my first shower in four days and I can't even explain to you how badly I needed that shower. I did my laundry, I charged all my electronics. This is because I'm at an actual campsite tonight and not camping in the middle of nowhere. I did 100 kilometers on day three and I think it took me about 10 hours because again, headwind and then yesterday I had this crazy idea that I was gonna bike 150 kilometers to Arcuri and I was desperate to do it because this is where the shower is this is where the campsite with the shower and the bathrooms and water and everything is and then I got to this hill and I don't know how to explain to you this hill but this hill took me probably four I was going up this hill for 45 minutes I ended up in this town called Varmahilid and I had a hundred kilometers left to go and it was almost 3 p.m. And I was, I was, I got some hot dogs at the gas station, got some calories in, went to the bathroom, and I was about to go do it. And I think I could have done it. But what happened was, I stepped out of the gas station, and there was a bus just waiting there that said Arcury on it. And I was like, I'm going to Arcury. And I asked the bus driver, is this going to Arcury? And he's like, yeah, it's going to Arcury. And I was like, can I take my bike on this bus? And he's like, yeah, you can take your bike on this bus. And I was like, well... I think that's God's way of telling me that I should get on this bus. And so I saved myself a hundred kilometers. Some may call it cheating, I call it smart. I saved myself a hundred kilometers and took the bus here. And I'm actually so thankful that I did because I think I would have forced myself to bike the entire way. But I think my body would have been in such terrible shape by the time I got here that tomorrow or today would be a terrible day. So thankfully I took the bus, came to this campsite, this most beautiful, wonderful campsite with hot showers, a laundry machine grass it's beautiful i love it here and i feel so refreshed
I love when I pass by another cyclist and we get to wave at each other like we're bus drivers. It's always like that. So, <laughs> whatever. There is a tunnel that I'm not able to bike through on the way out of Archery. And like a chump, I waited for the bus for three hours so that it could take me through this tunnel because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And when the bus came, the driver was like, actually, we don't take bikes. A bug just flew into my mouth. Ew. Protein. <laughs> anyway, I waited for the bus for three hours. When the bus finally came, the bus driver told me that I wasn't allowed to get on his bus with my bike. He was nice about it, but that's what he said, which is very confusing. There's like so many different bus companies out here. And some of them want your bike, some of them don't. But he was able to tell me that there's a detour where I can bike around this tunnel, which is what I'm doing now. It just takes a little longer. But it's such a beautiful day. I think it's the first sunny and warm day since I've been in Iceland. And it feels like summer. May I pass? Everybody gets to experience how that felt one day in their life. We're finally coming up on some different scenery, which is cool. As you know, I started in the north. The north was very countryside vibes. Like it was grassy and mossy. There's a lot of sheep, horses, cows, and grass. Now I'm seeing shrubs, trees, bush. That was not a thing earlier, which is why I never had anywhere to pee. And don't get me wrong, the countryside was freaking beautiful, but it's nice to feel like I've made some progress, like I've ventured on to the next phase of the journey, you know?
You know, sometimes I have to wonder why it is I like the things that I like. Because a lot of this trip has been literally torture. The days are so long and so hard and sometimes they feel like they're never gonna end. Sometimes I'm camping in the middle of absolute nothingness with no one around but sheep. I like the sheep, but it's like eerie and a little scary because I'm alone. And then I wake up and I bike for like 10, 12 hours a day just to do it all again the next day. And I'm sweaty and I'm stinky and I'm tired, but for some reason I like it. And sometimes I wonder why I don't like normal things. <laughs> But I am who I am. Obviously the pain isn't the part that I like. I like the reward, the bliss that comes from the pain. I will say, amidst all of the uh, trials and tribulations, I have had a lot of moments, like soulful, emotional <laughs> moments. I was thinking about this yesterday when I was climbing up yet another set of hills. This happened twice yesterday. I was biking up another terribly long hill for at least like an hour. It was draining, it took everything in me. I get to the top and then I got to ride down the hill. You know that feeling of feeling like you're flying down a hill, like it feels almost magical. And I got emotional thinking about it. It was the most beautiful view. I was riding down this hill for like at least 10 minutes and it just kept going. It was the most surreal feeling. And I was like, wow, I feel so alive. But then when I thought about it, I felt just as alive when I was pushing my way up that hill as when I was bombing my way down, if you will. Not to get all deep about it but like going up the hill and going down the hill is just such a stupid metaphor for life but it really does make you feel alive your legs are burning you're sweating in the hot sun or the cold wind and you're using like every part of your body and everything you have in you and that feels alive it's all part of it I guess do you see all these bugs also I've decided that his name is Borg that's his given name um, but his street name is Lammy. Because <laughs> my inner child wants to call him Lammy so bad. But I know it's a dumb name, so his actual given name is Borg. Because I bought him in Borganess. And I'm showing him the world. So I do have one small issue. Last night when I was riding to this campsite, the, the screw inside of my front rack popped off. As you can see, it's supposed to look like this. It just popped off and I couldn't find it, which was fine because I have extra screws, so I thought I just had to put a new one in. Now that I'm really looking at it though, the threading is completely fucked. Like it's, it's, I thought it just came unscrewed, but I think it like ripped itself out somehow. So I don't really know how I'm gonna fix that, but I need that. And I'm nowhere near a bike shop at all. My friendly neighbors gave me this roll of tape, so I'm gonna try to put it over the rope that I just tied and hope that this doesn't kill me. Nothing a little rope and tape can't fix. I'm in bug country. I don't know if you can see them swarming around me, literally. Like, they're not swarming everywhere. They're just swarming around me. And there's, there's just more. Like, even when I go fast, they're, like, all around me. It's like a cloud. And it's icky. And it's hot. It's hot as heck today. Yeah, bug country. It's not, it's not looking too good. This is nasty.
Look at that crater. I think it's a crater. We are just so tiny. Everything here is so big and vast and just like empty. Last night I decided to stay in a hotel for the first time since the beginning of this journey and I pre-booked it online so I had already paid for it and after I biked like 75 kilometers to get here I biked another three kilometers down a dirt road to get to the reception and I get to the reception and the guy's like oh yeah your room's ready um, it's actually just seven kilometers down that same dirt road you were just on seven kilometers away from the reception and I saw that they had a campsite that I didn't know about so I was like maybe I can return the room and um, pay for a campsite instead because I cannot bike seven kilometers down a dirt road. That three kilometers took me like 20 minutes. He said I couldn't return the room, but they could give me a ride if I left my bike there. So I left my bike at the reception and they drove me out here. And they were like, we'll pick you up at nine in the morning. And then I had all my bags packed and ready to go by nine. And then nine rolled around and nobody came. And then 9.30 rolled around and nobody came. And I thought I was stranded here. So I started trying to commandeer a ride from all these nice Italian people that are staying here. And then they offered me a ride back. And as I was packing all my stuff into their car, my ride showed up. And now I'm in his car. Um, but he's getting the laundry, so I have to wait another 30 minutes. <laughs> also, this cost me like 250 Canadian dollars to stay here for one night. to pee so bad, but there's never anywhere to pee. Every two hours, I feel like my bladder's about to explode, and then there's nowhere to pee because all the cars are driving by and there's a bunch of nothing around me. So that's okay. I'm about to go down a cool hill. so many different different types of tears since starting this trip even last night I called my boyfriend crying because I was feeling exhausted like just so exhausted and I think last week being that everything was so new and I still had so far to go and I had a lot of overwhelming feelings I was trying not to feel them too much and don't get me wrong I sat with my feelings accepted when I was feeling scared and I accepted when I needed to cry but I would kind of cut it off at some point or like go on my phone or do things to distract myself after a certain point because I didn't think I would be able to go on if I let myself feel those intense feelings to the extent that I could have. If does that make sense? If that makes sense? Now that I'm past the halfway point, by the way, yesterday was day eight, today's day nine. Yesterday I officially made it halfway. I feel more robust than I did about a week ago. Like I feel mentally and physically a lot stronger than I did when I started and I feel like now I actually want to focus on being more connected with my emotions and my mental state throughout all of this because that's a big part of it obviously. And so now I want to focus on doing my best to take it all in. Not just what's physically going on around me or what's physically going on in my body but what's mentally and emotionally going on and what I'm feeling. Good talk. Welcome to my TED talk. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Um, today, I'm headed to... Fuck, I don't even know what it's called. I have it on my Google Maps. 
It's a 75-ish kilometer day, which is not too bad. It's been windy, but it's kind of refreshing. I like, I noticed that you either get cold and wind or you get bugs. And I find that I prefer the cold and wind over the bugs. a little foggy before it's suddenly like very foggy and I'm breaking out my tail lights so I'm heading into that tunnel right there which is the first tunnel so far that I have to bike through the other two I wasn't allowed to bike through I had to take the bus through one and I had to bike around the other one but this one I'm allowed to go through I'm just scared because I think it's gonna be pretty dark I'm gonna turn on all my lights and just hope everyone can see me It's so eerie in here, it's like one long cave. I'm just past Hofen, and I'm finally starting to see some of these snowy cat mountains over here. All the other mountains I've seen have looked pretty dry. This is the first snow I've seen the whole trip. and I was sitting here enjoying the view looking out of my tent and I looked to the right and I saw this massive cloud of rain coming but it's been so peaceful and I've been journaling and I'm feeling very pleasant which is nice I feel very <laughs> meditative at the moment I've been I think I've been sitting here for the last 20 minutes in my blanket I don't even have my bed set up just like listening to the rain and it's really really nice. I've been more drawn to cats recently because I love both of them.
one day I tried to skip sunscreen, it's like sunny and hot as hell and I'm biking right into the sun. I have a consistent tailwind for the first time like since I got here. My glacial ice lagoon from this morning was unreal. Unreal. Woo! I'm sweating. It's a hot one. Look at these mountains. From being in a glacier to being in like a desert. So behind my campsite, there's a network of hiking trails. And I'm hiking up to Skardifoss? Skardifoss? I don't know how to say it. Spartifoss. Skardifoss or Spartis? Skardifoss or Spartifoss? It's a waterfall, obviously. I can see it over there. Well, I've been thinking a lot about, especially today and a few days ago, about being present and how I usually am not. It's very rare that I'm ever just like fully present in the moment. Like in my day-to-day -day life, but also even out here, I find that even if I'm not distracted by my phone or a book or a music or a podcast or whatever, I'm internally distracted. I'm always like planning out the future, whether for better or for worse, whether I'm stressing or I'm anticipating something exciting, or I'm thinking about the past, regretting things, or reminiscing on things, it's like I'm never like right now. I'm never in the right now. It's such an icky habit because I came, I came to Iceland, ex like, I don't know, when you go on a trip, you kind of expect to be so mesmerized by the country you're in and the culture and everything, that you feel like you're just going to be in it. But that does not come for free. If that's not a habit you have at home in your everyday life, it's not a habit you're going to have in Iceland or Colombia or Mexico or wherever you are. If I don't know how to check in with myself at home and remind myself of what's going on around me and what's going on in my body and just like in this actual moment, I'm not going to be able to do that in another country, you know? Since coming here, I've been fighting two separate battles, I would say. And I think one is the obviously the physical battle of like cycling every day and whatever. It's physically the hardest thing I've ever done. But the other is is mental and is fighting, literally fighting the battle to be present and to be undistracted. Obviously, it, this, this thing that I'm doing can be painful, it can be stressful, it can be arduous. Um, and I try to dampen that by listening to a funny podcast or a scary story or like an album I really like. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think there, there are, there's a time and place. But, I, w I came here to feel my feelings. I came here to feel the physical pain in my body and the physical release and the bliss that comes after the pain. And I came here to fully immerse myself in what I'm doing. 
and I've made a, I feel like I've made a lot of strides. I feel like I've come a long way in the last two and a half weeks or however long it's been, 15 days. But this was always intended to be an emotional journey as much as it was a physical journey. And I think it's getting there. I have a very special guest joining me today. Do you need help? Is that my best friend in Iceland? <laughs> Is that my cutest best friend? It's honestly irritating, but I know it's not their fault. Like, well, I know, like, you can't help if you snore. Like, you probably don't even know you snore. They sell potatoes that, like, move your teeth and make you not snore. But it's like, if I was, like... Get a CPAP machine. You know? Machine. Look, literally. <laughs> I, t- I say this to Jet all the time. Like, literally get a CPAP machine, you have literal sleep apnea. Ugh. Listen, I believe this is a hard hike. I'm not gonna no, it lie. was. It was right in this park. It was, like, almost 2,000 I'm well, convinced I was misinformed because you were no. like, girl, I'm gonna pop off that trail and go to the next trail. It's gonna be so easy because no. it's such an easy hike. And I, I was like, girl, are you? I, I mean, what would you have done if, and I'm being so serious, like, my foot is taped like this? That was also in my Reba era. Oh, yeah, I, knew, I do love Reba. No, I knew you like, like, old country, like, Reba. <laughs> I think the only time I judged you was when I first met you and you had <laughs> the Juno album and Imagine Dragons, and that was the only music you listened to. That's what I judge because that was chaotic. That was actually insane. You had two albums and one of them was the Juno album. Like if it is fish and it smells like fish, it doesn't bother me. But if it's not fish and it smells like fish, that's a problem. She's like, why are these wild geese? She was like, oh no, these are like my pets. They like live she outside, has a flock. but like they chose me. That's so cute. No, she literally has a flock. Oh, I have to show you all the rocks I collected. Bring them out. Okay, I'm gonna show you my two. I only got two. They're doing some funky ass behavior. I, s- I saw a dead deer. Oh my god, there's whey protein in this. Shut up. Rest in peace. Okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> so basically, folks, the lid fell off. And my dinner fell. And now, the problem is that this happened before. <laughs> I just realized something so dumb and sad. But I really wanted to go to to see the plane wreckage today it's like an an american war plane or whatever on the black sand beach and i was really looking forward to it honestly this whole trip i was looking forward to it and i was passing by it today so i was going to stop and hike over to the beach and i was so focused on my cycling and i was just so in the zone that i passed it by seven kilometers not including the hike and so if i were to go back now and then come back here after that would add an extra 14 kilometers to my day, plus seven kilometers of walking on the beach. And I don't know if I have time to do that. I don't even think I have the energy to do that. And it's kind of dumb of me not to go, but I don't think I'm gonna go. I dropped my bike. I hate that bikes also don't, like nice. This bike is the nicest thing I own. And I paid all my money for it. And. It doesn't have a kickstand, and I know that's normal when you own a nice bike, but it really bothers me. Every day. Every single day. And look who's on my seat.
it's my second last day, and in proper Icelandic fashion, it's windy and rainy. Today is officially the last day of cycling, and I'm so excited. I'm very excited for the feeling of accomplishment that I'm going to feel when I get my butt back to the region of a campground. And I'll have done it. Like, that's crazy. This is one of the hardest things I've ever done. And this experience has taught me how to trust myself and how to have my own back. Because I've never really had to have my own back like I have out here. I've never even been away from home for three weeks at a time, let alone cycling around a country I've never been to. And I'm so grateful that I got to do this, but I'm also grateful that it's almost done. I survived a lot of wind, a lot of bugs, a lot of rain, and also like a lot of fear and a lot of doubt in myself. Not doubt, I always knew I could do it, I'm not gonna lie. But fear, like I don't know, I've never camped alone in the wilderness before either. In the middle of nowhere, might I add. But I had my back and I held my ground and I'm proud of myself, to be honest. Not to, you know, hype myself up too much but I'm really proud of myself and I'm also so excited to be done I'm exhausted I'm so tired the the lid popped off my beverage but lucky for me I'm wearing waterproof clothes anyway the drama of it all I feel like I'm literally 15 kilometers from the city and my bike is starting to break down just now oh, Sandra! and I'm hoping she's gonna make it because I'm so close but listen to that the gears keep clicking when I'm not pressing the gear shift uh, like every time I pedal the gears shift for some reason and I brought an extra an extra chain but I'm not not I don't know how to fix this problem city 17 or 18 days ago and I'm back <laughs> I literally made it by nothing short of a miracle my bike stopped clicking and we made it to the campsite I thought I was gonna have to do a cool runnings and carry her to the finish line but she made it I love you Sandra